Hello and welcome to Nerd Subculture. My name is Jared. And I'm Edwina. And this is our You're Watching That Again movie podcast. Today we're doing Police Academy 6, City, City Under Siege. Siege. Uh, this movie first released in the US on March 10th, 1999. 89, sorry. 89. Starring Bubba Smith, Michael Winslow, David Graff, Marion Ramsey, Leslie Easterbrook, Lance Kinsley, Bruce Mahler, Kenneth Mars, Matt McCoy, George W. Bailey, and George Gaines. Over to you, Eddie. Uh, warning, this is a full spoiler podcast. If you haven't seen this movie, please come back when you have. Uh, we're discussing our favourite movies that we have seen way too many times. And... And why we love them. Uh, Jared has picked, again, we're going through the Police well, Academy we picked, movies. Well, I picked one, so we've got to do them all now. So, yeah. <laughs> we started with one. We've got to finish it. Now, had you have you actually watched this movie oh, a yes. ton of times? Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay. Because I was going to ask, what's your memories of this movie when it came out? Uh, I saw it at the cinemas. What? Yeah. I remember going to the cinemas and watching this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. We, we were a big Police Academy family. We were like, I can remember the fourth I, one I coming have, out. I have seen your laser disc collection. Laser disc. We've only got the first two. I've only got two on my laser disc, but uh, I had all the others on uh, tape as well. Um, but I remember the fourth one coming out, and, and I'm pretty sure I did see those at the cinema. And I don't really remember seeing them at cinema, though, but I def- definitely remember watching this in the cinema, and uh, the crowd was pretty happy with it from memory. And... Uh, yeah, I was about nine years old at the time when it came out. Yeah. So, yeah. So the exact audience for this movie is like a nine-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah. So my memory, my memory of this movie was specifically going to the video store to get this movie. Right. And like I lived out in the country. It was a like we didn't have a blockbuster like one of those big video stores that has like you know six new back back in the day when uh, several new releases yeah, yeah. that they'd have like blockbuster would have like six overnight new release videos mm-hmm. uh but the little shop that in my country town <laughs> it was a one-stop shop it did everything it was a milk bar you bought your hay oh, no, there. no no this one this one was an actual Specific video shop. Oh, a specific yeah, yeah, video yeah. shop. Wow. Uh, and they had, uh, yeah, but they would only have like two copies of new release overnights. Mm. So I just remember driving in with dad to go get this movie because <laughs> we were going to do family movie night and just being like, oh, I hope it's there. I hope it's there. I hope it's there. <laughs> The anxiety. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. And luckily enough, it was. So we got to have, we did a little. Yeah, I think it was a, like a family movie night watching it. Oh, okay. Well, it was a family movie uh, night to the cinemas when we watched it. Yeah. Oh. So now, uh, just to just to cross over to you again, Eddie. So, what was it like on your initial sort of review? What was it like rewatching it, and what was it like when you saw it? Can you? Um. So I I had a very faint memory of this movie. Though, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I probably hadn't seen this movie since. The nineties. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was a so long time probably ago, last century. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'd what I had watched it again since that initial first viewing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I had very very faint memories of it. I was getting it confused with Mission to Moscow, which is the next one. Mm, we'll get to that one. Don't worry. Uh, and all I remember is the silhouette. On the wall, and, oh, yeah, and the, of the mastermind, yeah, yeah, of the mastermind. That's mm-hmm. about all I really remember is the mastermind, yeah, yeah, plot line, and uh, Jonesy uh, turning into a robot, <laughs> which is like honestly, that's hilarious. That scene, it's I will give it that. Like, it's an amazing scene in a pretty big, <laughs> like it's a a a grade skit, yeah, in a. B grade movie. Barely B grade, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. for me, um, I, I actually really did like this film when I saw it and I still did for a, a long time. It was it was kind of one of my favourites. I, I felt that like, I'll get into a bit later. But uh, And re-watching it again all these years later, like I'd say I probably haven't seen it since the 90s as well. Um, I think it still held up to some point. I think it was... Okay, you know, but uh, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Anyway, uh, you do your synopsis. And anyway, we'll do the synopsis and we'll get back to it. Captain Harris and Lieutenant Proctor stake out a bank, but the Wilson Height gang manages to elude them. 
In his office, the mayor is furious with the latest crime spree and reprimands Harris and Commissioner Hurst for his precinct's slow response. The governor is involved now. He brought in a special team to stop the robberies, and that is Commandant Lassard. The mayor orders Harris and Hurst to work with Commandant Lassard to apprehend the gang. Lassard assembles a seven-man team consisting of Hightower, Tackleberry, Jones, Hooks, Callahan, Fackler, and Lassard's nephew, Nick. At the site of the gang's latest robbery, a bank, the police academy team discovers clues that suggest the Wilson Heights gang are being orchestrated by some other shadowy figure. After canvassing the neighbourhood for any information on the Wilson Heights gang with little success, Nick stumbles upon a paper report of an antique diamond heading to a museum and gets an idea to use it as bait. However, the robbers nab the diamond anyway by cutting a hole in the truck and escaping through the sewer system. Commandant Lassard and his men are later suspended after jewellery from the gang's last robbery is found in Lassard's office pending an investigation. The team decides to clear his name by investigating and solving the crimes themselves. Having Hooks access data files from a computer, Nick deduces that the robberies are occurring along an old bus line in the city, thus intentionally lowering property values in that part of the city prior to the announcement of the new replacement line system. They also learn that someone must be leaking information to the criminals, which is why they are always one step ahead of the police. The police academy force finds and does battle with the Wilson Heights gang during a citywide blackout, taking down Ace, Flash and Ox, while Nick chases a leader. A pursuit follows, which leads to Commissioner Hurst's office, where they find Commissioner Hurst. But, after the real Commissioner Hurst arrives, Hightower unmasks the fake Hurst to reveal the mastermind has been the mayor all along. Caught, the mayor admits that Captain Harris has been unwittingly leaking information during his daily meetings with him, and he could have made billions off the properties if it had not been for Lassard and, and those that, pesky and kids. And those pesky kids. <laughs> Hurst then apologises to Lassart and reinstates him and his team, and a plaque is given to honour the officer's bravery the next day. The end. All right, so I have one thing that I have to say. What about are you going to start? So in the last movie, I talked about how the bad guys were like really cartoony. Yeah. Uh, in this one. The plot is pretty much a Scooby-Doo episode. It, I can't believe they did the Scooby-Doo ending. It's not just the Scooby-Doo ending. It's the fact that instead of using ghosts and ghouls and monsters to lower the property prices, the mastermind, and I'm doing little air quotes for yes, the mastermind, <laughs> yeah. uh, uses a crime wave instead of ghosts. Yeah. And then at the end they pull a mask off his face. Yeah. <laughs> One last thing. Let's just see who you really are, mister. <laughs> Why, it's old man Withers, the guy who runs the haunted amusement park. And I would have got away with it too if it hadn't been for you snooping kids. Good one, Shaggy. Was that even needed? I don't know why they did that in the end. That was Because literally whoever <laughs> wrote this movie decided that they were going to like they must have been they must have had like all these like sort of skits skit ideas in their head. Mm -hmm. And then they must have been like, you know, high on coke and watching like Saturday morning <laughs> cartoons and they've watched hey, a Scooby-Doo. that's Scooby a good Do story for a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, awesome. I know, I'll, we'll do this plot and then we'll rehash all the character jokes, you know, like Tackleberry's a gun nut, you know, Callahan's a sexy strong woman. Mm -hmm. You've got um, High, Hightower is strong, Hooks is quiet and yeah. then she's loud. Uh, and you know, Nick is Jonesy does side side uh, sound effects. Yeah, and there's like the boring Mahoney replacement. The Nick and Nick, Nick is Nick. Nick, Nick yeah. is just Nick. <laughs> He's just the boring main guy. They yeah. didn't give him a blonde generic love interest this time. Well, they they flirted with something. I was watching some deleted scenes, and there is a scene where he's driving like a fancy car, and a woman pretends to be a, a valet driver. Like she walks up to a fancy hotel and sets up a little stand saying valet ticket and he drives up to her and she steals his car but he was on onto her the whole time. And they have a little moment like she may have been a, some sort of love interest or something or uh, I, I don't know. It was a weird scene. Uh, I, I, don't, okay. I don't even know where it would have fitted in the film to be perfectly honest. Well, as I said, it could, probably could have fitted in anywhere because <laughs> it is just a collection of little little skits mm, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. Uh, it it really doesn't have much of a 
like flow, to be honest. Yeah, the pacing's pretty uh pretty and, awful. Uh, um they also well, you know, they do bring in they pretty much bring back all the characters from the last movie. Uh-huh. Uh with the addition of Fackler. All right, Fackler. You mentioned Fackler. Yeah. So they bring in Fackler who you know, he he was always the the ex. He wasn't. Is he ex? Not accident prone. He like he's a walking disaster. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And like they get like they go and play. Well, the pool. original film, he uh, he started the whole ride right, with th- an apple. With an yeah, apple, yeah, he yeah. threw one apple and it started a whole <laughs> domino effect yeah, of so turning into of, a full blown ride. He sort of riot. has this. Yeah, well, wherever he's walking, there's like this domino effect. Uh, but I swear in this movie, they ham it up. They a just thousand turned times. that up to eleven and. <laughs> He's, someone was smoking in the in the police offices there and put the cigar next to the fireworks there. <laughs> yeah, like why there were fireworks there, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know what? It was pretty funny. I did yeah, like it. I did it enjoy like, that. It was when they'd go to play pool and it's like, oh, for fuck's don't sake, give don't give cue. him a pool cue. Do not give that man a pool no, cue. No, no, don't do that. whatever you think is going to happen, yeah, it happens. Like yeah. he, he manages to knock out. What three guys without actually <laughs> realizing what was happening? Oh, everyone's just really <laughs> well, sleepy at the moment, <laughs> yes. without having a clue about what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I did like That's that. Okay, yeah, you guys are tired. I'll, I'll shoot again. It's nice. But I will talk about what does work in this movie. Okay, so what works and um, what I think is the most memorable part of this movie? It's Jonesy. Yeah, yeah. Like Michael Winslow. Yeah, I, I felt like they really did give him a little more free reign in this film. We even gave him his own little stand-up part as well. Yeah, like that. that but I, I'd seen him live a few years ago, and that pretty much was his act. Oh, uh, a very, very snip, close snippet of it. But he did yeah. do a Jimi Hendrix impersonation, which I think was absolutely hilarious. That Jimi Hendrix, I, I laughed my ass off as a kid. That when I yeah. saw that, it was it was really good. I loved it. Like, of course, they give him the kung fu thing to do as well. Like he's been he's been doing, I think, the past. Since I think the second done, one, he was ever, doing that. Ever yeah. since the second movie, they've done the kung fu yeah. thing where he puts the, <laughs> the headband, <laughs> the headband, on, headband the ba- on. The bad lip syncing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in this one, they also add in the addition of like um, him like using the rubbish to make it look like he was actually a robot. <laughs> and it, it is probably one of the funniest things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that is probably the funniest moment, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who else? Oh, they bring back uh, Mrs. Stanwyck from, uh, well, from the actually, fourth movie. Uh, yeah, they they brought back Billy Burt, so she played Mrs. Feldman. But oh. yeah, that, this is really weird. So you see her in the museum scene. Yeah, so with, she's playing a different character. Well, yeah, he calls her Mrs. Was it Stanwyck? Uh, St- yeah, Stanwyck. Stanwyck. Yeah. Now I she's credited as that. I'm like, oh, that's weird. So I rewatched the scene, and Jonesy calls her Mrs. Stanwyck. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe, well, maybe Mrs. Feldon got remarried. Maybe she got remarried. But it seemed very odd to have the recurring character. She was in... Well, she was kind of a bit more kick-ass in the fourth movie, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah, she was, yeah. She was a, In this one, she seemed a bit more posh. Like. Yeah, yeah, but it seemed like she knew Jonesy, though. Yeah, so, but yeah. I, I assumed it was. Even you assumed it was the same character. But then when you realised when you read the name, oh, that's not the same name. Uh, f- for some reason, I have no idea. Yeah, she's credited as a different character, I think. Okay. Or maybe not. Maybe she remarried. You know, she's a yeah. bit of a kick ass. She has needs. <laughs> <laughs> Met a nice fellow in a retirement village and, yeah, remarried, I, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, that's a weird one, that, isn't it? I, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't understand that. So just to throw some confusion, maybe there's some de- other deleted scene where they brought that up. So Maybe. Uh, but speaking of cameos, we have another cameo in here. Oh, yeah. We have Alison Mack. Alison Mack. Yeah, Alison Mack. Who's that? From Smallville. Oh, yes, 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 yeah, yes. She played the girl on the bus when she told Proctor, you're better oh, than a regular you're, you're, bus, you're, bus driver. Yeah, you're not allowed to talk about and Alison Mack. To, uh, she's in jail at the she's moment. She's in jail. Yeah, yeah, starting a sex cult and recruiting girls and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm um, not going to hear from her much these days, I don't think. No. Uh, I thought you were going to talk about the other uh, cameo. What was the other cameo? Of uh, what, what were they called? The the 
the singers, the rappers. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, the rapping so, scene. So I, like I see a rapping scene. I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure those guys are some somebody. They look pretty legit, didn't they? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they're. Word. <laughs> <laughs> they, they actually did that as well. Um, <laughs> not like, like, oh, they look like they're some sort of legit. Mm. Uh, yeah. Grandmaster Meal Meal and Van Silk with their song, What's the Matter with Your World? What's the Matter with Your World? Yeah, which Question was mark. a song for the movie. It was movie. a song for the movie. Made yes. specifically for the movie. Well, I don't know if it was made specifically for the movie. The, mo- the song's actually quite dark. <laughs> Talking about <laughs> hypodermic needles sticking out of your arm and stuff like that. Um, you know, about anti, it's sort of, you know, anti violence sort of song and, and you know. But while while they're singing this, they're showing clips of the film with explosions going off and stuff like that. Yeah. It's a pretty ordinary video clip. It's uh yeah. I didn't even realise there was a song for this movie till yeah, till looking this up. So yeah. and uh yeah, that was it. So that Grandmaster Meal Meal Mal Meal 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 is uh still going, making albums and stuff, I think. Um the other guy, Van Silk, I couldn't find much about him. So, and that was just one of those one-off collabs. So, but I guess it's kind of a good partnership. It gives them a free plug, and it gives Police Academy some street cred. You know, yeah. <laughs> getting this <laughs> trying you know, to, trying to get, band, trying to get East get, Coast hip hop. I think they were meant to be. Yeah, trying to get the younger demographic involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, they they got the two black characters to do a rap with them. That's pretty like yeah. To use the word, we didn't use it back in the day, but I'll use it now. Cringy. It's really cringy. <laughs> uh, they actually appeared in the video clip as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, High Tower and Hooks as well. So yeah. that was uh that was kind of interesting. So yeah, word. And they do that a lot. And Word. I think he says he's gonna like Hightower says he would punch. The, what was he? No, uh, said I'll shoot you in the no, head. No, no, or no, 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 no. He <laughs> says, uh, we "Leave you guys so we won't dispute you. But if you lie to us, we'll come back and shoot you." Word. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yep. <sighs> yeah, Bubba Smith with his uh, rapping creds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably say overall this, but this movie is it's, it's a bit of a mess. It's, yeah, it's probably the worst of. The bunch. Oh, I think like, I I actually think it was better than a previous one, number five. Oh yeah. Yeah, I I would actually say it's it's better than that one, and I I actually did like the idea of a mystery of them actually doing some police work. Yeah, <laughs> that's something they haven't really done before. They yeah. never really chased a case and looked for clues and tried to deduce what was going yeah, on. Yeah, as, they, they as were contrived still, and 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 they were still not very good at their job. <laughs> And the and the, the the plot of like the jewels being found in Lassard's office, mm. and then you know thinking oh maybe he'd something to do with it, even though he'd been only brought in late after the yeah. fact, and yeah. I'm sure it'd be pretty easy to clear his alibis and all that. So, and it was kind of obvious that uh, Harris was the mole because he like they still knew what was going on even after they took over. Like the bad guys still knew. What exactly. Was going on. Yeah, but it's funny how that how they could deduce that one of them was the mole, like because they'd obviously only just came in exact as, as I was saying before. Well, it had to be either Harris or Proctor. There was only two other people who were on the case from yeah, the previously. Exactly. So, so I don't know why anyone from the police academy crew could have been the mole. It's uh, mm. it was pretty a bit of a wild accusation. Yeah, but it was also like when they when you've got the two commandants. Is it the commandant? Uh, as he's commissioner. The commissioner, sorry. Yeah. When you've got the two commissioners, it was obviously the guy that you saw run into the room <laughs> sitting there. Other than, oh, at the end, yeah, yes. yeah. When they're chasing him and, and you see like, him go on the room. Oh, which we don't know which one it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, obviously the guy who was walking <laughs> with all the other people when he came into the room Is wasn't. We've got to do the Pinocchio's trick. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and that's when we get the... Nose pulling off, like the mask pull off, and then he does like. Then the mayor starts doing like this crazy, like maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. Off the rails, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Those real estate scams. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, 
but talking about it being cartoony as well, I think Harris even does like the little, like when he falls in the hole that they cut out from underneath. The, how on earth they didn't like, like I've done welding in my life. <laughs> uh, the to, amount of smoke that would come from that? Yes. Like you would, A, you would smell it. B, you would fucking hear it. Yeah. You'd probably actually <laughs> feel it too. You'd probably too, feel, feel the, the heat. heat. Yeah. Although although it wasn't welding, it was some mythical laser that they were using. It looked like a proton pack even, from Star Wars. Uh, even if it was like a mythical... Yeah. Cu- cutting steel cutting creates into, cutting into heat, steel. creates smoke. <laughs> Creates a, a pretty noise. pungent smell, noise. Yeah. Yeah. Like how. No, a car alarm wouldn't drown that out going yeah. on from outside. Yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah. But anyway, he falls through the hole and it's a perfectly round hole yeah. also. Um, and he does the Flintstones run. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so Cardi has a burning calories. Um <laughs> Yeah, but also convenient. It was the the sewer lid was directly directly underneath it. Yes. If they if they were like half a car length forward or back, it wouldn't have been able to do it. Yeah, <laughs> lots of conveniences. Yes, lots of conveniences in this one. Yeah, there weren't there weren't as many uh, pranks. Uh, I like the chair prank. I thought that was probably the best one. The, the reoccurring one. Oh, the one where he, they he they goes break the he, chair. Go, he breaks the chair and then but then he goes he goes and sits in the other chair but they've super glued that chair. But just the part before that when he goes to sit on the chair and he just touches it and it falls to pieces. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, and so he sits but that was a trap. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, it, he gets glued to it. But again, that's a, that's another one that they've done before. <laughs> yeah, he's been super glued before. <laughs> he's been super glued a few times. <laughs> you think he like keep a, a, some like methylated spirits with him or or uh, paint S- tinders some or something? Some sort of acetone. <laughs> yeah. He carries around that nail polish with him. Yeah. Or nail polish remover. Sorry, with him. All oh, right. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Right. Because I'm worth it. Yeah, as I was saying before, like when I was a kid, this was one of my favourites. I, I, I like the mystery about it um, compared to the other ones. I think that's what sort of enthralled me. I mean, for a nine-year-old, I mean, the Scooby-Doo mysteries are pretty Oh, yeah, I love, I love, <laughs> in, Sco- I love Scooby-Doo as a kid, yeah. Oh, wow, that's a cool way to get property. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and re-watching it again, yeah, uh, look, it, it was it was okay, you know. It was it was fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I honestly find this one a bit forgettable. Yeah. 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 I I think the addition of Fackla was. I remember that was a big deal at the time. Like, oh, Fackler's back. He's only been in two of the uh, previous films. Yeah. So only the second and the third one. But even in the when he w- sorry the first and the third one. Yeah. But when he came back, did he come back for the? What one did he come back for? But it was like. Almost a cameo with his wife joined. That was the, the third one, yeah. Yeah, it's when yeah. his wife joined the the police academy. Yeah, and he like they reenact the same scene from the first movie. Yeah. on the hood of the car. Actually, no, sorry, he wasn't the second one. I just yeah, yeah. sorry. So the first three, yeah, yeah. But the actor yeah. who played him hadn't done much. It's pretty much all he ever did. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, he was in Hook as a pirate. Uh. Arr, matey. Uh, although I did like the joke of the mayor, like keep keep forgetting words, words all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's talking about, oh, we look like a bunch of, oh, what do you call it? You know, where the king says, bring me my, oh, what do you Oh, the <laughs> fool. The fool, yes. <laughs> yes, a fool. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, yeah. He kept doing that. Yeah. Apparently, that was something that he improvised. Well, so, it was probably why it was actually funny because it wasn't, because <laughs> it was improvised and it didn't come from a Scooby Doo cartoon and it wasn't. A mm. reoccurring joke from a previous movie. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of the jokes are the reoccurring jokes from the previous f- like yeah. four, four or five movies. Yeah. Um, and interesting. I watched the trailer for it. The trailer kind of gave away. Yeah, it does actually, doesn't yeah, cause it? Yeah, because it keeps saying, "Oh, there's a mystery. Who is the guy?" And it keeps showing so, the man. Yeah. It keep- <laughs> but you forget that, like back in the day, like. They gave away like the entire plots of movies in the they trailers. They used to, yeah. They they want to at least give you a, a short snippet of what you're going to see, and then you go see the whole thing, which you know is already going to happen. Yeah, but so I, that was the I thing. do remember at one stage I was like, I pretty much started had to, like stopped watching 
trailers when they came on because they really did give away too much information. Yeah, and that that one's a pretty that's a real um uh horror, terrible offender I reckon. So, yeah. Oh, I think one of the worst ones was like it's a terrible movie uh Terminator Genesis. Oh yeah. Its trailer yeah. gave away like the one of the big plot twists of yeah, the Yeah, John Connor was a Terminator. Yeah, it showed it in the trailer. Yeah, that was yeah. a weird one. I read there was another film with um Edward Norton and Robert De Niro and he Edward Norton Ed Norton's character was pretending to be retarded or something and um they were trying to steal some jewel or something like that in the museum. Anyway, he ends up sort of him and Robert De Niro are working together, but then he ends up turning on him. And it, it shows a scene at the end where he turns on Robert De Niro. Mm. I can't remember what film it was. Um, it's not a great film, I don't think. If I can't remember the title. It probably wasn't that great. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I just remember that one. I'm like, oh, God, really? All right. Um, oh, I want to talk about the showdown with the trio, the the Hearts oh, game. Oh, yes. Now, I did kind of like that. I yeah. liked that. So you had the the three villains was Ace, which was the gunman, uh, Flash, who was the acrobatic guy, and Ox, who was the, the big, big guy. guy. Yeah, and, and he didn't talk. No, he actually he did sort of talk. He, in the end, he did talk. Remember, he, uh, yeah. he asked, oh, what the hell are you, two Jones, and, uh, yeah. at, at the end. But um, that's what I thought. And again, that they've, they're also very, very cartoony characters. Yeah, so you've got the strong, the... the the quick, I guess, yeah. and the and the brains, I guess, or yeah. something like that. So yeah, the there's one, sort of one's strong, one's fast, one's smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that they, they, they basically have a showdown with their counterparts. Yeah. So of course you have Ace the Gunman who goes up against Tackleberry, and you have Flash the Acrobat who goes up against uh, Jonesy. Jonesy, and of course. Big guy Ox goes up against Hightower. Uh, Hightower, which is probably the worst of the fights of the trio, if I want to say. The, the, if I was to rate the fights between the trio, that one was probably the worst because basically yeah. they just kind of hug each other. Yeah. Although they punch each other at the start um, and then he just punches him again and then he gets knocked down. For some reason, that one worked and the other yeah. ones didn't. Um, yeah, the, the gunman one wasn't too bad, but of course the Jonesy and Ace one was the best one with the robot scene yeah. at the end. <laughs> He had yeah. one. He had one trick up his sleeve that the other guy couldn't overcome. Yeah, is that <laughs> he, can, he, can, he can do the robot. Yeah, yeah. He even did like the funny part where he, where he was like glitching out and was repeating what he was saying. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was kind of really yeah. creepy. But I think there must have been. Uh, I think so. It's eighty nine. So it's sort of playing off of the Terminator movie as well. Yeah, yeah. Which was also quite popular. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, yeah. I came out of several years before that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. still pretty fresh in everyone's mind, I'd yeah. imagine. Uh, so I was going to mention some deleted scenes. All right, yeah. Uh, so I mentioned one one before with the uh, the valet girl, which was yeah, not very great. Um, most of them were kind of terrible, or just little add-ons to scenes in the film. Probably a couple that I thought were a little weird was uh, there was one scene where an ambulance is stuck in traffic. And uh, Tuckleberry comes up and says, oh, you know, you guys need some help? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. He drives off around the corner on his motorbike then comes around with a tank. You actually see it a bit in the video clip as well and he drives uh, the tank yeah. through like a window shop. <laughs> he completely destroys it and then says, oh, guys, I made a path for you and they drive through the shop. Yeah. <laughs> it's just awful. Yeah. Tuckleberry. Yeah, oh yeah, Tackleberry has a kid in this and then also nearly kills his father in law. Yeah. Uh which also <laughs> was his last appearance in the film too. Yeah. Yeah. So legendary actor. Well he was in Star Trek. Original <laughs> OG Star Trek. Uh and What was uh, he in Star Trek? Oh, I think he was just a red shirt or something. <laughs> oh, okay. I know his IMDP INDB page has a picture of him in Star Trek uniform, so yeah. I'm not sure if he was a really caring character or not. Uh, one other deleted scene, there was a couple of, there was like an extra bit of Jonesy in the nightclub, actually. That was actually kind of funny. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I'll play it now. Hey, real microphone. It's got batteries. Bring the work. All right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, here comes out of nowhere these sanitation technicians at 5 a.m. Mm. Yeah! 
there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Jared. So yeah. it, do you think it's question time or did you want Yeah, uh, I don't have any rabbit holes you. I think I've uh... – oh, actually, no, I wanted to talk about Leslie Easterbrook, her scenes. Oh, yes. So the, the weird gym scene. Yes. So this is why they, they have they, female oh, gyms. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, so in every scene she has – well, pretty much nearly every scene she's in, the guys are so creepy to her. Yeah. So there's that one which, uh, the opening scene when she's in the gym and the guy's like standing right in front of her mm. and he's just staring at her. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like in this gym, everyone is just staring at her the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Like, Eyes just fixated. Time. Like, God, you know. And I, and I think I, like, I was like, like, at least, like, gyms are full of mirrors. At least try to be a little bit sly about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know, you, you're yeah. like all just gawking at her. Like, he's actually, he's, he's meant to be spotting a guy and he's got his back to the guy he's spotting and he's staring at her. Mm. Uh, and she's doing the leg, was it the leg crunch yeah, yeah. thing? And <laughs> so she's opening and closing her legs as well. But yeah. to have the guy on the, doing the weights with the, his head blocking. Yes. The, <laughs> <laughs> that sh- that shot, so it's not as uh, perverse. So yeah. yeah, that guy had a nice view of that. Yeah, um, and then he's oh, and she's in a very tight leotard. Yeah. So, but yes, why why we have all female gyms? But there's also when she's running, all and there's like a pack of men running <laughs> behind her. Yeah, like that's <laughs> also a lot of times women get attacked while oh, running. Oh <laughs> god, that is so creepy! And there was even like that other scene at the end where almost like almost went to a rape scene where she yes. was like and she all kicks. on her own, but she kicks all their ass, which is yeah, yeah fine. But it, 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 it was a little uncomfortable, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, you knew it was going to be okay. You know, you weren't wasn't going to go too bad, but uh, yeah. Well, you knew that she was going to kick their ass because yeah. that's what she normal does in every movie. <laughs> She's the she's a strong, sexy woman. Strong female character. Yes, yeah. Strong female character. Yes, but literally strong. Yeah. <laughs> and is basically there to be objectified. Yes. <laughs> I yes. think there's a final scene at the end where the guy waves his hand when he's talking, he puts it near her breasts as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you notice that? Yeah. No. Right at the end. Just the last little one. Just to throw him right, right at the end. And yeah. I think she even rolls rolls her eyes. Yeah. She's got sunnies on, but you can tell. <laughs> God, I'm so over this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a nice send off in the end, I think. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, so, yeah. Uh, question time, Eddie. Do you want to get into it? Yep. All right. I want to ask you a bunch of questions, and I want to have them answered immediately. All right, so I believe I'll be asking the questions tonight, Eddie. Okay. The tables have turned. Mwah. Mwah. Maniacal laugh. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eddie, uh, what was your favourite scene? Uh, I've already said it. It's, yeah. Uh, Jonesy doing his... Jimi Hendrix. No? Yeah. Uh, yeah, him doing his stand-up routine. Yeah. Yeah. Jonesy, Jimmy, mine one too. Yeah. Yeah. Honourable mention the robot scene as well, I yes. think. Yeah. 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 Give him that one. Uh, what was your favourite prank? Well, I kind of see that as a prank, the robot scene. <laughs> so I'll put <laughs> pun- that, yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll put that down as I'll a I'll allow prank. it. I'll allow it. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that one. That's good. You know, because uh, the, the bad guy gets pretty scared by it. Yeah. <laughs> He shits himself, he doesn't shits he? Himself. I was like, what the hell are you, man? Up. Makes sense now. <laughs> Target human mission destroyed. My God, you're a robot. My God, you're a robot. My God, you're a robot. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Rest now, human. Uh, yeah, so my favourite prank, uh, I love the recurring chair prank and uh, 
and the way it ended as well. Like I, they finished it off with it, but I do like the one where you just touched the chair and it just completely fell to pieces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like yeah, we part. have to talk about all the the chair pranks. So it starts off with the what's the first one? The first one where he he just twists uh, Hightower just twists the, like the front leg of it when he's not when Harris isn't looking, and then he sits down and that one falls apart. And then later, the next scene is where he they say, "I'll take a seat, Harris," and he looks at the chair. He gets his cane. And he just touches it. And the chair just completely collapses. Yeah. <laughs> so he says, oh, I'll take the other chair. And that's when he gets the, the chair glued to his ass. And then the final one is where he goes to take a seat. And he's like, no, actually, no, Hightower, I'll take that seat. You take that one. Hightower's like, yeah, sure, no worries, mate. And as he sits down, the balloons that are attached to the stage that they're on, uh, cap- uh, Commandant Lassard cuts the cuts well, one end off, and which lifts you, the you, chair you, you up. Don't, you don't see who cuts it. Until until you it, see him salute and he's got the scissors yeah, in until, his hand. Until you see him trying to hide the scissors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do like that. Yeah. Bit. So it was kind of funny to see Lassard getting in on. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the 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 balloons take off yeah. with him attached, and it ends with him flying over the city <laughs> on a chair. <laughs> the, the balloons. Yeah. Taking him away. Yeah. Uh, so, next question: uh, Which character was your favourite, Eddie? Uh, Jonesy again. Yeah. Yeah. There's well, as I said, there's not too many added characters in this no, one. No, there isn't. No. So. Yeah. And no. he probably gets the best scenes. So. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, next question, Eddie. Best stunt. Um. This was a hard one. I couldn't really remember. Yeah. The stunts that were in it. Probably does Hightower get like a whole heap of shit dumped on him? I uh, yeah, he does. I guess yeah. yeah. I'll go with that. That one, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like the Return of Bigfoot. What? What uh, was that? Oh, uh, the monster truck car. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bigfoot. I remember Bigfoot uh, when yes. I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, that's right. The, the funny joke is like, does anyone know how to drive one of these? And <laughs> and Tackleberry's like, I took one of these on my honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, he saw it too. He drove off in it. It wasn't the same one though. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, next question, Eddie. Who gets the wooden spoon? Harris. Harris gets the wooden yeah, spoon. I think Harris. I, I love... I, Do you know why? Because the, like the episode starts, he is so happy that he has gotten away from the police <laughs> academy <laughs> and Lassard. And he's got his own precinct. Yeah. Uh, and then the mayor ruins it all for him. Yeah. <laughs> God, ruin it all. <laughs> Actually, that reminds me of one joke that I thought was pretty funny. The scene where they're hanging, uh, they're doing the squidging and, and they're doing the undercover uh, part. Yeah, yeah. And he's trying to listen in to the thing and Proctor's like... Yeah. But Proctor's like getting really, really. Yeah, I like really that every time he's getting, he gets into something, he gets really into it. Now, I really like that about him. You know, when, he's, when he steals a bus and they're, they're trying to chase through the chase, he stops at the bus stop. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, this is our route, sir. We got to pick up our customers. You know. <laughs> yeah. So whenever he goes undercover, he like yeah really really goes undercover. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and during that scene, they they rec- they're trying to record uh, during the scene of when they're hanging up on the, on the building. They're trying to record that yeah, he's, conversation. He's doing the window washing. Yeah, but then when they go back to the precinct and they're playing the recording, and you hear Harris screaming for like dear life and <laughs> on the recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when they sit down quietly, he accidentally presses. Uh, ha- um, Proctor accidentally presses play on a tape recorder, and you hear. Harris screaming again. Oh, please help me. Help me. <laughs> Give to the poor. Give money to the poor. Oh, please don't let me die. Well, that was part, oh, yeah. that part was a little funny. Uh, for me, the wooden spoon went to the mayor. Yeah. The Scooby Doo. Oh, the, the mastermind. Plan, the, the, the mastermind. The Scooby Doo plan. Awful. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> a real estate scam. All right. Yeah. How original. Not. People just stood that joke, jokes. that <laughs> joke's the most dated joke possible. All right. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Uh, next question, Eddie. Who gets the Oscar? Oh, Michael Winslow. Winslow? It's going to be controversial. I gave it to Proctor. 
Yeah? I liked Proctor in this. Okay. Yeah. I think I think he's been better in some of the other movies. Yeah, so. yeah. I know him just really getting into the bus driving and <laughs> and the window washing, uh, you know, singing Christmas songs in August. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of Jerry in some ways, you know. Oh, just, okay, co- yeah. Just oblivious. Yeah. I think yeah. Every, he's just oblivious to everything that's going on. Yeah. And a big brown noser as well. <laughs> yes, yes. Even playing with the trains as well. Like, it really <laughs> seems something Jerry would do. He'd play with trains, wouldn't he? Oh, that's the sail, isn't it? He's blowing the sail. He's playing with the little ships and he's blowing it. Oh, he's, oh, doing, he's playing okay. with all little he's, things. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, final question, Eddie. What do you rate this movie out of 10 using something from the movie? I'll give it three out of 10 Scooby-Doo endings. <laughs> I will give it five window squeegees. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, look, you know, I hate to say it, this is we've passed the peak of Police Academy films and the next one... <laughs> oh God! Now I know this goes against you watching that again formula. It has to be something we've watched again and again. And I'm telling you right now, I watched that once, maybe twice, and I'm not looking forward to it. I, I'm curious to know how if it's as bad as I remember, and I think it's going to be. The thing is, I can't remember it at all. All I remember is it was so bad I blocked it out of my memory. <laughs> and and to be fair, I, like. I know I've seen it, mm-hmm. but yeah, I can't remember anything. No, well, I can't I, remember anything. Well, we look forward, not really. <laughs> and as I said, I, I think I think I might have been getting this one confused with it because I thought Mission to Moscow was when they were running through the sewers with the with the silhouette man. Yeah, no, actually, this movie was planning to be uh, made in Moscow, but it was still under the old USSR, uh, and they couldn't get yeah. in there to film it, so. When they went back there, the USSR just fell. So I think it fell like uh, maybe like less than a year after this film came out, ninety ninety, I think I believe. So and when the domino started falling with yeah. the uh, Berlin Wall in eighty nine, so I think yeah, maybe even was it this year? Maybe eighty nine. It fell ninety. I can't remember now. So yeah, it's around this time. So mm. yeah. All right, Eddie. Um, was there anything you wanted to sneak in right at the at the, at the last minute or anything? I've. No. Uh, I've got nothing else to say. Yeah, no, nothing. neither do I. No. Well, do you recommend Police Academy 6, Eddie? Uh, it's one of those... Hmm. If you got to five, you might as well go to six. <laughs> yeah, I think if you've already watched the others. Like, it, you know, it's probably better than the last one, but you, you know what? It, it's probably a good one to watch with the kids. Yeah, the kids will enjoy it. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's for kind of a nine-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> A nine-year-old me loved it, so if that's any consolation. Yeah. It's for nine-year-old boys. Nine-year-old boys, yeah. All right, Eddie, let's do it. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed listening to us tonight. We are Nerd Subculture. My name is Jared. I'm Edwina. And if you want to find us on the internet, Eddie, just Google. You can find us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. There is a Facebook group, and you can email us at nerdsubculture at gmail.com. And if you want to help out the podcast, uh, please follow the link tree on the socials to our merch store. Yeah, so like, share, subscribe, chuck in a comment or something. Or don't. I don't care. Yeah. Or listen <laughs> to each episode twice. <laughs> yeah, Every, yeah, everything yeah. helps. Listen to it twice. Listen yeah. to us twice. There listen you go. to us again. Give us an extra download. All right. We'll leave it there. Take care. See ya. Bye. Bye.